Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Followers of the Way Christmas service of celebration. I hope you all had a very happy and blessed Christmas day yesterday. And I say that knowing that um, Christmas, especially this year, has uh, come with some difficult and challenging times for people, with lots of people self-isolating. Some of you I know um, in the midst of or recovering from COVID. And of course, it's also a time of loss and of grief for some as well. So difficult times. And of course, we're all concerned too about what next year is going to, to hold. But in the birth of Christ, we find again the awe and the, the wonder of God's love and of his gift to us. Because from that first moment when we fell in the Garden of Eden, came under Satan's dominion, God was at work then to set us free and to bring us back for himself, to bring us salvation. And in the birth of Jesus, in that stable in Bethlehem, we see at last the birth of the fulfillment of that plan. And we get something of the wonder of God's love for us that never lets us go and of his absolute faithfulness that we can trust completely. So this morning, however, whatever you're facing, however you find yourself, whether you had a wonderful Christmas, best ever, or whether you were left feeling a little bit, a little bit under par there, this morning we rejoice and we know that whatever lies ahead in Christ's strength, we shall prevail because God is faithful and he loves us. So a very, very warm welcome to you all this morning. Just a few details uh, about um, the service this morning. As I said, it's intended as a service of celebration and reflection. So it's a little different this morning. We've got four readings uh, telling the Christmas story. Uh, with carols interspersed and they, that will just go through without any kind of announcement uh, or interruption from myself because we just want this to be a time of entering into God's presence and reflecting on what um, the Lord is saying to us at this time and then Steve will bring us the Lord's word uh, there will be no breakout rooms uh, after the service today uh, we hope you have a happy, a happy day for celebrating. We hope you manage to, even if it's via Zoom, that you manage to get together with uh, family members and friends. Uh, and just a quick reminder that there'll be no service next week because we're taking a break. So the first followers of the way services in the new year will be on uh, January the 9th. So as we uh, come before the Lord as we commit our time to him. A verse, a verse from Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So now just let's take a moment to just gather ourselves in quiet, to be still, to let the Lord's love surround us and fill us and uphold us, to let his peace, his healing strength flow into us. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the price paid to, to set us free and to restore us to relationship with yourself, Lord. And we thank you that the light has come into the world and the darkness cannot overcome it. Lord, we offer to you now our service and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come, that you will breathe your presence through all that we say and do now. Guide our thoughts, guide our hearts. Lord, help us to hear your word and build us, Lord, in your spirit, that we might, in the days to come, show forth your glory in this world. So, Lord, be glorified now in all we say and do. 
and may your name be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. So we begin with um, a Christmas song, a carol from, I think it's Anthony who's starting us off. Good morning, everyone. Happy Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sound in joy, repeat the sound in joy, repeat the, repeat the sound in joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, for as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory is all his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Mighty God, and there shall be no end to the increase of his rule, 
to the increase of his government and peace. For he shall sit on David's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this, and he will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of second reading is from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake. reading continues from the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20 and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle store, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the baby is Lord of all. Swift are winging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the baby is Lord of all. Christ the baby is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, angels keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, Greet the morrow, Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. The fourth reading is taken from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together. He inquired of them where the Christ Jonah said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him bring back to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they did. And behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went before them, till it came over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being warned in a dream that they shouldn't return to heaven, they departed for their own country. Lord, open your word to our hearts and our hearts to your word, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a very happy Christmas to everyone, and may I also say a very happy St. Stephen's Day, but we're not focusing there. Our focus is still on Christmas. We're all familiar, I'm sure, with the 12 days of Christmas, the song that we hear often in December to in the run up to Christmas Day. And many think that the 12 days end on Christmas Day, when in fact the 25th of December is the first day of Christmas. The 12th day brings us up to the eve of the Epiphany, the 6th of January, when traditionally, the wise men visited Jesus. I hate to be a spoil sport, but almost every nativity and Christmas card is wrong because they show the shepherds and the wise men visiting Jesus at the same time. In reality, the wise men showed up a long time afterwards, as much as two years later. Their arrival in Bethlehem to view the Holy Child is known as the Epiphany, God's revelation to the Gentiles. And it's quite astonishing when we think of it, that Matthew, the most Jewish of the Gospels, should begin with Christ being revealed to the Gentiles and end with the commission to make disciples of all the Gentile nations. So just who were these Gentile wise men? And why is their visit so significant? Well, we don't know much about them because all the information we have is contained in these few verses from Matthew. We know they came from the East, probably Persian, and traveled quite a distance to get to their destination. What caused them? to undertake such a vast journey, almost a thousand miles, over a long period of time, at least four to five months, and at great expense. These wise men were magi, most probably court officials employed by kings to advise them using such means as magic and astrology similar to the magicians that we find with Pharaoh in Egypt, who opposed Moses and Aaron. Astrology and magic arts are not practices that Christians ought to be dabbling in. So why did God use such men as these to reveal his glory? The answer is, we don't know. But it does mean that God is not limited by our understanding and can choose the most unorthodox ways to make known his truth. These wise men noticed an unusual star in the eastern sky, 
and concluded that a new king had been born to the Jews. Now, how could these men, from miles away geographically and worlds apart culturally, come to that conclusion? How did they know anything about the Jews? Well, remember, 600 years before Christ, the Jews were exiled from their homeland to Babylon. When Cyrus the Persian became ruler, he allowed the Jews to return. Some did, but many remained. So Jews were widespread, and their holy scriptures were well known, including the prophecy from Balaam in Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. So on seeing the star and realizing its significance, these wise men start the long, arduous, and expensive journey to pay homage to this king, probably sent forth by the stop Jerusalem was really no surprise, as this was the capital city. And where else would you expect a king to be born? It was a surprise, however, to Herod and to the people of Jerusalem. They were unaware of the heavenly sign heralding the birth of the Messiah. Herod knew that he was not the rightful king of the Jews. He was simply a puppet king placed there by the Romans. That is why he reacts in the way he does, disturbed at the arrival of, of these Eastern travelers looking for a king. The Jewish hope of God's Messiah coming had intensified over the years. So it would be reasonable to assume that the civic and religious leadership in Jerusalem ought to be delighted by this news. However, Herod, along with the established priesthood, had aligned themselves with Rome and feared anything that would upset the status quo. So Herod tries to deceive the wise men, sending them on ahead to find the child in Bethlehem when he found out this is where this pretender to the throne was to be born. Verse 8, we read, He, Herod, sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. Of course, Herod had no intention of worshipping or paying homage to the newborn king. He wanted to get rid of him, and he was using the wise men to do his dirty work. Locate the boy so he could kill him. The Magi, however, were blissfully unaware of the king's intention and happily traveled the six miles south to Bethlehem. They were overjoyed at seeing the star once again that led them to the Christ child. And they approached this child as they would any king, most reverently upon their knee. Verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. The act of bowing down and worshipping was in humble submission to his royal position and doesn't necessarily indicate that these Gentile magi, wise as they were, knew that this was the Son of God. Yet the gifts they presented show a significance beyond their understanding. Each gift was expensive, fit only for royalty, and speak of the attributes of the Messiah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh reflect the Christ child's sovereignty, supplication, 
and substitution. Gold shows his sovereignty. Gold was the most precious metal known in Bible times and was so costly that it could only be afforded by kings and princes. The gift of gold is fitting for the child born to be king of the Jews. This title belongs to Jesus. As Matthew took pains to show in his genealogy, Jesus is in the royal line of David and born in Bethlehem, the city of David. But he is so much more than just the king of the Jews. He is king of all, including these Gentile magi who bowed in homage to him. He is, as we've just sung, king of kings and lord of lords. His kingly rule extends throughout the earth. Yet rather than being a geographical area on a map, his kingdom is in our hearts. It's as we bow the knee like the Magi and confess with our tongue, Jesus is Lord, that we are made citizens of this heavenly kingdom on earth. The second gift, frankincense, speaks of supplication. Frankincense was used in Israel as part of the only recipe for incense to be burned on the altar. The wise men probably gleaned this information from the Jewish Torah available in Persia. What they wouldn't have known is why it was so appropriate. Burning incense on the altar was symbolic of the prayers of the people ascending up to God. It could only be done by a priest an intermediary between man and God. But a sinful people had to go through a sinful human priest. who had to atone, first of all, for his own sins before presenting the prayers of the congregation before a holy God. Jesus is our great high priest, our perfect intermediary, because he is the God-man. As fully human, he is able to understand our weaknesses, though he himself is without sin, and can make supplication on our behalf, because he comes as the only begotten Son of the Father. Jesus' life was filled with prayer, and now his constant supplication is for us. As we read in Romans 8, 34. Christ Jesus is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. And then the third and final gift, myrrh, speaks of substitution. This was the most unusual and disturbing gift. Yes, it was expensive, just like the others, but this was one that was used in burial rites. It indicates that even in his infancy, Jesus' destiny was clear. He was born to die. Not just die as everybody else does, but die for others. He is our substitute. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Israelites in Egypt slaughtered a lamb and applied its blood to the doorposts of their houses, and they were saved on the night of Passover. In a similar way, we must apply the blood of Jesus, our substitutionary lamb, that we may be saved from sin. How do we do this? By repenting of our sins and trusting in Christ alone for our salvation. We live by faith. But repentance is not just a one-off event that occurs when we are converted. It is an attitude that we must develop throughout our Christian lives. We must daily repent, be a people of repentance. And this is a good attitude to have as we enter into a new year. The 12 days of Christmas end 
as we celebrate the coming of the Magi, bearing gifts and receiving an epiphany, a revelation of God in human form. They traveled far. It took a long time. It was costly, but it was worth it. On the 20th of July, 1969, the world heard those now famous words. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 11's journey to the moon was far greater and much more costly than the wise men. In today's terms, the cost of putting man on the moon was $288 billion. And yet, that is nothing compared to the infinitely greater cost of the Son of God leaving heaven's glory to be born in humble circumstances as a human baby. Jesus made the journey to earth that we might make the journey to heaven. And that is a gift worth having. Amen. Thank you, Steve, for such a, um, gosh, compelling reminder for the, the wonder of the Magi's visit and the significance of their visit and what it means for us today. Um, reminder, too, of the very real spiritual conflict going on in the world, I think, with uh, Herod and his response to the Magi arriving there. And that just, uh, I think, brings us on to the needs of the world now. And this is a call to us to continue that prayer for the needs of the world that still continue. Do we have David uh, with us at the moment or not? I think perhaps he's not with us. So, Philip, would you like to uh, lead us in prayer for ourselves, for the needs of the world, for this Christmas time? Thank you, Linda. Like the wise men we have gathered today to pay homage to a king. He is our king, and he is king of kings and lord of lords. There's a hymn which talks about being lost in wonder, love and praise. And this morning, Lord Jesus, we want to say that we are lost in wonder, love and praise. When we consider that as so as Steve so beautifully phrased it, you, the son of God, left heaven's glory to be born as a human baby. You are the light of the world and you stepped down into our dark. You are the great shepherd of the sheep and you are our great high priest. And when you took human flesh, you opened for all mankind a window of salvation. And that window of salvation has been kept open these 2000 years past. But Lord, we know that the window of salvation will not stay open forever and that dark days are coming upon the nations. And so we cry out to you now on behalf of suffering humanity and on behalf of our own nation. Although we are citizens of the heavenly kingdom, we have dual citizenship here on earth. Too. Father, we place before you the nations of the British Isles, and we ask, please, that you will do a great work across these islands. We are in a situation where our freedoms are greatly threatened, and there are those who, for reasons best known to themselves, wish to remove those freedoms. Father, you stand for freedom. You came to bring release to the captives and freedom from darkness to the prisoners. 
You are a God who wants above all things that people will be free to choose whether they choose you or do not choose you. That is up to them. But you wish them to have the choice. And we ask, please, that you will ensure that the light of freedom continue to burn in our nation. Not just those freedoms that we talk about when we discuss civil liberty, but the greater freedom to choose the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom and his way. Father, there are so many across the world who are suffering in various ways. You know it better than we. You feel it deeper than we. But that suffering, Lord, is always an outworking of things spiritual. And though we cry out to you for the physical things that we see in our world, we ask you please to move in spiritual power, to bring spiritual healing. So many are lost and alone at this time. So many are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And we ask please that you will stir your people to bring the good news of the gospel and to manifest the kingdom so that our people may have relief in their suffering and may know the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we place before you Israel and the Jewish people. They are entering once again times of great threat and great trial. And we pray today for the peace of Jerusalem, for the protection of the state of Israel, and for the salvation of the Jewish people, whether they are in the land or yet outside the land. We know that you have a heart to bring a great wave of Aliyah across the earth so that you may gather the Jewish people to the land again. And we ask, Lord, that you will make your covenant people receptive to that call, that they will answer the call of Aliyah now while they may do so in relative freedom, and they may take their goods and their wealth with them. And Father, we ask please now that you will great, give great wisdom, great understanding and great insight to everyone in Israel who is involved with the protection of that nation, that they will know from heaven exactly what they should do and not do to thwart the plans of those who wish to destroy Israel and to annihilate the Jewish people. Father, all these things we lay before you, but we also bring before you our own personal circumstances and those who are dear to us. We name them before you in our hearts. Now. We name especially those in our own families and amongst our own friends who do not yet know you as Lord and Saviour. And Father, we ask that you will give us grace to say your words to them, to preach the gospel all, at all times, and if need be, to use words. That many, many in this year of our Lord, 2022, will come to know you and joyfully take hold of the greatest gift of all gifts and unwrap that gift and take it for themselves that they too may be citizens of your kingdom. Father, we ask this year coming that in our nation your name will again be glorified and lifted high, your plans and purposes fulfilled, and your kingdom greatly advanced to the glory of the name that is above all names, that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, indeed. Thank you, Philip. The times truly might be very short. Who can know the mind of God? But it does feel as if um, the time draws near for his coming again. And for all of us who know Christ, 
I truly believe there is a special calling. We are here at this time for a purpose and we are to stand in the gap and that the fate of many is on, in the balance at this moment. So we are called to be witnesses of the Lord and to hold the gift that God has given, her, given us in the birth of Christ. We carry that now. So let's, um, let us uh, join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. And I don't know if we have it on screen, Chantal, or not, but if we haven't, uh, I'm sorry if I'm plunging you into panic. But um, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, Lord, is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all, Lord, uh, all of you for joining us this morning. Uh, we do wish you a blessed and happy Christmas season. Uh, now, I'm not sure if Anthony or Jane are going to lead us in a song. Anthony is going to lead us in a, a final song, and then we will have the, the blessing. Anthony, thank you. And just before I um, I'll come all ye faithful uh, is is Latin written in Latin uh, at Esti Fidelis originally, and um, I, I just had this image of of streams and streams of light. Um, you know, like when you see one of those pictures of a, a motorway system in the in the night, and it was streams and streams of light, but coming from all the nations of the world throughout history, throughout all time, all converging on one place and um, to, to the feet of the Christ King, of our Saviour. So be encouraged and be blessed today. <laughs> oh, come, oh, ye faithful, joyful,
Maranatha. Thank you, Anthony. Come, let us adore him indeed. I wish you all a very blessed and happy new year. Uh, and know that you are special to the Lord. Know that you are loved. Know that you are not alone. So may the joy of the angels the wonder of the shepherds and the peace of the Christ child fill your hearts this Christmas time and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and throughout the coming days now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Bless you everyone. Thank you. God bless.